first of all, to put, put stuff into context, why are we even here and why are we doing this presentation about some random firm? Well, it's because um, Ugent and Kenneth here is our client. So uh, we are doing a lot of stuff on Easy Build and on Ugent actually. So that's just to clear things up. Uh, yeah, so uh, what I'm going to talk about today is, uh, um, so first of all, I would like to introduce you to our firm, what we do and what we could eventually help you with. Secondly, what we've already uh, done for Easy Build project. And, and uh, thirdly, uh, we're going to present uh, our latest developments in documentations and uh, explain why it's cool that these, are, these new docs are coming and what we can do with them. So first of all, who's Inuit? So um, we are a company, uh, we are over in, uh, we have uh, eight, uh, eight uh, offices in, in four countries. So that's the uh, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Ukraine, and of course, Belgium, uh, over for 180 employees. And what's important in our, in our culture, in our development, uh, is that we really uh, like to use open source technologies and we call ourselves open source innovators uh, because of that. Um, so these are three types of services that we, we provide. So for uh, technology solutions, we are using, uh, we, we, uh, we specialize in obviously continue, uh, CICD, so for that we use, uh, use uh, stuff like Jenkins, GitLab, CI, CD, and so on. Uh, then for infrastructure as a code, we use uh, Terraform, Ansible, Puppet. Uh, for, for good logs and metrics and, and traces, we use uh, Grafana and Isinga. And for container orchestrations, we, uh, we use Kubernetes in case, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so for business solutions, these are things that we we uh, have experience with. So uh, about digital asset management, that's, uh, for example, um, when you want to store a lot of pictures, a lot of texts in, in uh, uh, well, online, that's uh, what we did. Uh, we helped with a, uh, a particular um, library to, to get them online and to be able for them to uh, provide their services online as well. Uh, then point of sale, there's a, there's a specific gym provider or gym chain in, in Belgium for, for whom we, we've uh, uh, helped to set up their memberships, their payments, and so on. Uh, yeah, so what do we do on, on Easy Build specifically? So first of all, we, or, or, or on you again, well, first of all, we love the idea that we are contributing to open source and getting paid for it. It's always nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Kenneth. <laughs> so what exactly it is we do like day, day to day is that we mostly write easy configs. And why is that? Why is it important that people or that you can our our sources it? It's if you ever wrote a single easy config, you probably know. But um, the the thing is that, and I'm going and I'm going to generalize a little bit here, but. Um, Oftentimes, it, it's true that uh, scientists just create a create a software, and they because it's going to solve a specific problem. But they and, and they publish their, pap their papers and whatnot. Um, but then they don't really care about how to package that software and how to make it distributable and repeatable, the process of installation and so on. And of course, that's where that's where we come in and. Uh, we're trying to get rid of this works on my machine approach. So this is a, a great example of one of many uh, softwares that we've had uh, recently. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, this, this software called Finder, this is a patch for that software that I created. And it was, uh, it was written in, in a way that it was only able to run in Docker or, in, or, or inside a Singularity containers, which is a big no-no if, if we're talking about uh, how things work on, on Ugand at least. And so I even had to, if you see, I, I even had to add uh, the option that you can run this uh, software. Uh, it's called bare option. So you just 
run the stuff. You don't need any setting up of container and so on. And so even here, you can see that the the developer of this of the software didn't expect that somebody would be willing or able to take care of dependencies themselves, which obviously we want to do. And of course, there's another um, issue of bundled dependencies, bundled binaries, which is something we we aim to get rid of. So these are some some nice uh, numbers. Uh, so we've already up, up today uh, we've contributed to 400, 461 easy configs, eight easy blocks, and we even laid foundations for uh, the easy stack development uh, in in the in the framework repository. Um, yeah, so typically what happens is that uh, Kenneth. Uh, gets uh, an installation request for 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 their uh, HPC clusters they they that they uh, that a researcher wants to have some software uh, supported and then obviously we have to first install it and and um, go through it and and create easy config out of it and then it's supported so that's that's what we help with um, let's go to the documentation part so We've realized, uh, and we've talked about this, uh, that there, there is a certain problem quite recently. And that is that EasyBuild and Eugen is getting quite a lot of love from uh, its users. And what, it, what this means is that um, we're getting, or Kenneth is getting, and we are getting as well, a lot of requests for supported software, which is great. But at the same time, it can make a, if, if one, if for example, one software is quite difficult, then it can mean that there is a, a backlog of other software pieces which we don't have, which we don't really have time to uh, work on and 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 care about for for a couple of months even. And that's not what we want. We don't. Nobody wants you know their customers to wait months until something is ready to be used. And. Uh, so we, we've created a, a solution, which is we're going to make a really good doc, which will be aimed mostly, but not only for the more simple um, kinds of installations of easy uh, of creating easy configs. So these docs will guide people through creating easy configs. Uh, it's going to be for uh, it's going to be um, focused on different easy blocks, such as you know Python packages, CMake, Make, so on. Uh, and it's going to be really step by step, and we're going to have an example at the end. But uh, so it's going to walk you through what you need to do before you uh, create the easy easy config, including where to look for dependencies, what what to include in your easy config, like sanity pip step, uh, sanity pip check, and so on. And uh, yeah, so we we are hoping, and obviously th th this might not be. The one other benefit is that, and this this might not be um, applicable for for administrators, HPC administrators. But if there's a user who wants to support some sort of software, there's a chance that they already know something about the software, and they already know how, maybe even how to install it or, or how to install it with the works on my machine approach uh, at least, and. So we want to quite we quite want to utilize that fact and um, even you as as uh, as uh, system administrators could potentially ask their users if they are able to look into creating the easy config because there's a great guide for that there isn't but there will be soon and uh, yeah so all that combined uh, we think that we can streamline the process and speed it up a bit. And so we win because we will have more time to uh, think about potential Im improvements on the framework or, or adding easy blocks and so on. You win, you win or the scientist re researcher wins because they will have their, in ideal case, of course, they will have their, their easy config ready way quicker than if they had to wait for us. And then, of course, community wins because everybody can then reuse what you've done for the for, well on their site and so on. So yeah, that's that's the thing that we would like to 
proposed here. And yeah, let's now look at the example of uh, how to use easy configs or how to use our documentation to let you walk, to let it walk you through the process of creating an easy config, a simple easy config. Hey, hi. Uh, so uh, in this part, oh yeah, I'm, I'm short, sorry. Uh, in this part, uh, this will be a kind of a tutorial for uh, the end users who, uh, who are mostly asking uh, the admins for creating easy config. So uh, you might even point them to the recording of this, uh, of this talk and they can go through it. Hopefully they can learn something new. Uh, for this one, it's not updating for some reason. Hmm? There seems to be an error. Oh. Uh, it's using the Wi-Fi. Seems like it. Yeah. Oh boy. But I'm now it's now it's rather interesting because it's disconnecting from the Zoom. Yeah. Which is weird. But maybe there are the Zoom stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> This is what happens if you rely on Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Actually, yes. Yeah, this is really nice. Worked on my machine before. Yeah, of course it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, but yeah, the Zoom is not working. Um, Zoom doesn't like this very much. Are you trying to get connected? Mm -hmm. Is it, or the slide with PDF or something else? Uh, it's uh, it's online on Google Drive in the Google Search. Thanks. Um, yeah. Can you pass me the link? Yeah, sure. Slack or will be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tough luck. Uh, light should be there. Where did you? I sent it near in the beginnings. No, oh, couldn't send. Really seems that yeah, there is a Wi-Fi problem. Do you have the link to the? Yeah, can you pass it to me? So, hopefully. Well, now I think my wife is back. So we jump back into the room, you can do it one more time. Mm -hmm. There's a path here we can go into. We go to the speaker stand with the room. Yeah, I know you must have to make it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am here.
Oh, hello. Oh, that's you. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, back to where we back to where back to where we've been. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, just a quick tutorial. We'll be looking at uh, uh, this package called Multi QC, uh, which uh, uh, we have the homepage. We know the name. So what we can we know the GitHub. So first thing that we can do go to the GitHub and look for the dependencies that uh, it needs. Uh, we often look for them in uh, in setup.py or pyproject.toml or some other uh, like version of these uh, these config files. And uh, here we can find it in uh, in setup uh, in setup.py. We can see all the all the uh, dependencies that are needed with the versions. Those versions sometimes depends on the on the package uh, can be too strict. So there's uh, that's nothing a simple uh, set couldn't couldn't fix. Just uh, if there would be like two equal signs, just uh, switch one to the uh, is greater sign and it should be good. Uh, then we can look into into the database of uh, all the easy configs or at some stack and uh, look whether there isn't a older version of the of the software or or the of the package that we want to install. Uh, thankfully, there is an older version of multi QC, so we can use that. If there isn't, we can just uh, uh, write the you can, uh, we can say header of the of the easy config uh, in this manner nothing too hard uh, just if you're using the older one you have to just push the version and the toolchain version uh, just so they are up to date uh, then you go to the dependencies and uh, this might be tricky for some but uh, if we take a look at the first dependency, which is Python, uh, and then we try to search it uh, in the in the uh, stack of uh, easy configs, we can uh, see that uh, Python actually isn't in uh, FOSS version 2022a, but uh, it's in uh, GCC core. Uh, there is uh, uh, in the docs. There's uh, this uh, uh, table of common tool chains, and here we can see that uh, 2022a uh, is actually using GCC of version 11.3.0. So we just look for the version of Python that uses the same GCC, and we pick that that one and just edit the edit the version on the python uh, what we did here we do for every package and extension there is extensions we can look up on pypy or wherever they're needed or wherever you can get them and uh, once you do that you're all done oh wait uh, apparently uh, this is one of the one of the easy build errors that hopefully soon will will be made pretty, prettier because th this doesn't look good. But what this says is basically by pushing the the versions, the, updating the versions, introduced a new problem, which uh, is that a uh, rich package or rich extension that we are using uh, has new dependencies that we forgot to check. So, and multi QC has a new dependency from its older version. So we just we can just add them, and yeah, we're done. Uh, the important thing is uh, to remove checksums if you want to test build it, because then easy build won't will complain about checksums not being correct. But after that, uh, oh yeah, uh, you can also you should also uh, Add some sanity check paths, which are the paths 
where easybuild uh, looks uh, for existence of files or directories. And you can add sanity check commands. Usually that's uh, just the software printing the help or version. Or if there is, a, if there is a, some light example, just some test, quick test run, you can run that. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, you can uh, use easybuild with the, the uh, argument inject checksums, which uh, goes through the easy config and updates the checksums for you. So you don't have to, you don't have to go one by one and check everything. Easybuild does that for you. And then the most important part, uh, you can use the new PR of Easybuild, which uh, simplifies everything about uh, pushing the easy config to the to the uh, GitHub. Uh, this approach should be used even if you have a solution that works on your machine and you don't want to mess with it more because uh, what that does is at least helps us to understand where the problem is. Maybe add some errors that, uh, that you can have to the pull request so someone can look through it and the work is then much more easier than starting from scratch uh, because you don't have to withhold all the progress you did just for yourself since this is open source. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was us, Inuit. Uh, if you would uh, have any questions, you can reach me, you can reach Dennis, you can use uh, the email that's in here, uh, where we have a lot of things that we can offer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I think that this is the end of the talk. If there are any questions. So the, so, yeah. So so there's two things. So the the archiving we do is very different from totally removing them. They're still in view to some extent. Like if you use eb dash dash search and it finds an archived easy config, it's going to tell you. And it has an option to also show the archive. Oh, stuff. Didn't copy that so part. it's like hiding it out of plain sight, but it's still there. You can still grab it. You can do copy EC as well to easily copy that easy config and have something to start from. That's one thing. And what you can also always do is just go straight on GitHub in the easy configs repository, drop in the software name in the search box, and you'll, you'll find those old pull requests. So those are not hidden at all, right? Those are still in plain view. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so, also a switch for the, for the command to also search through the, through the, uh, the archive, archive stuff. Yeah. So the, if there's absolutely nothing more recent, then the archive stuff is better than nothing at all. It's going to be a bit more work to clean that up and to stuff that's been deprecated and no longer supported. Fine, but it's going to be still less work than starting from. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's yeah, that's a good argument. I think we're doing pretty okay there as well. Like the archiving is done deliberately. The easy thing is just remove them, right, and make it harder to find. Even then, you could still find them just through GitHub. But the archiving is a deliberate approach, like a, a, a middle step. Yeah, that's a good point. One other thing which wasn't discussed here, and that up until now has been a wild idea, but there is an open framework pull request um, to add a new feature to EasyBuild to very easily create an easy config file. It's been like in, like you have new PR, a new EC, and you just throw stuff at it. You give it like the homepage, the link to the source tarball, 
and it figures things out a lot by itself and it spits out this, like a, a template easy config to start from but that, it has everything in the right order and it's actually quite easy to figure out if you just throw stuff at it like version um, with a little bit of logic it can pretty easily figure out what is what and just give you something decent to start with. we should finish that up and, and especially for new stuff where there are no easy conflicts yet that this can save you quite a bit of time yeah. <laughs> There's, there's an open pull request in framework for it, but it's not finished at all. Um, that, that's something we should probably pick up again, maybe restart that effort. It, it got a bit, lots of logic, right? Because there's lots of if else, and it's, it's not like an AI, which you throw a tarball at and it, it gives you back an easy config. It's nothing close to that, but it could still be very, very useful. <laughs> it, it, yeah, well, it, it thinks it knows, but yeah, yeah. there's a mention that uh, uh, ChatGPT knows about easy config. Yeah, and easy build. Ah, oh, yeah. So, so Todd is advertising SPAC in the Zoom chat. He says they, they do have a SPAC new package kind of thing, which basically gives you a, at least a starting point to get started. Yeah. It's it's. It's a similar idea. Yeah. Yeah, there are some editors that have integration that they basically recognize the the extension, let's say, and then based on that, they already pre-create some kind of template to start from. Yeah. So we do have a template easy config in the repository. But that probably needs a bit of love, it needs a bit of updating. But if you copy that, you're, at least you have all the fields to, to figure out. And it, it does give you some guidance left and right. So we do have, have stuff like that. But it can be true. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So the comment is with, with this new EC idea, it could take an existing easy config as a starting point and you're just throwing stuff at it that it should change or, or, or modify, yeah. The current implementation doesn't do that, but that's something uh, in the back of my head as well to make that possible. I think we, we just, if you want to restart that effort, if people think it's useful, we just make a, a very minimal first implementation of that, and then gradually step by step improve it, make it smarter. Um, yeah. 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 So the 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 comment is the try options that we currently have should allow you to just get that easy config file so you can play with it first before trying to install it. That's actually already possible. So you can you can do eb try something something copy ec. So that's also an option you, you can give to easy build. Yes. Yeah. So no, no. So with the try things, it will generate the easy config file. If you add copy ec to that, it will copy the easy config file to wherever you want and not to any installation. So yeah, we can probably make that easier to do, but yeah, that's actually already possible. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm stopping maybe. Ah, yeah. So the like the idea of starting some template easy config. Um, that same idea could be used to, to start a template easy block as well. Um, to give you some starting point, like I want, give me an easy, there's a script for that I think somewhere. Like give me an easy block that starts from Python package but derives from that and then at least gives me the structure of what an easy block looks like. Yeah. At some point we had a script for that, not sure if it still works. Yeah. Okay. More questions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So John is making the comment that that easy update is a very useful tool for uh, figuring out what the latest version is of extensions and things like this. You, you'll mention this tomorrow in your talk, right? Tomorrow or today? Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay.
Um, one more thing about Inuit, they are sponsoring the social event tomorrow. We're still figuring out the, the practical things there, but <laughs> at least they, they put themselves up to sponsor the social event. So the boat trip will do in the Thames tomorrow, and the dinner at Richard the First in the pub is going to be sponsored by Inuit. So thanks a lot for that as well. And one last thing that I forgot, uh, this example that I was going through is uh, actually uh, step by step uh, taken from the documentation that we're working on. Uh, we're currently uh, finishing up on uh, the Python package and Python bundle uh, workflows, and there will be hopefully more coming for C, make, make, and others for, for the most common ones. So uh, there will be literal step by step workflow tutorials. Uh, how to create any easy config the users might need. <laughs>